right, the Stealth Arms grip safety. We get the question a lot on what kind of grip safety do you have? Is it a 220 or a 250? And it's sort of in between. It's, it's closer to a 220, but we came up with this design ourselves to make the lines from the frame to the grip safety a smooth transition. And we recommend using, uh, other grip safeties will work for the Stealth Arms frame, but we recommend using the Stealth Arms grip safety just so you get these lines. And here's an example of a uh, more of a 250 radius. And what you get with a 250, usually the, the grip safety kind of rides up. In order for the lines to match, the grip safety has to come up. And so that's why we chose a more 220 slash custom to make the lines you know come down and, and swoop around instead of coming up so high into the hammer. So the reason Stealth Arms makes you fit the grip safety, you know why do we do that? It's because clearly it's for safety but also if you're not using a Stealth Arms trigger and or frame, you know, maybe you bought the frame but you're using a another app, uh, another company's trigger. The back of their bow may not be as tall as ours, or it, it should be because it's all spec, but maybe it isn't. And you know, their trigger, back of their trigger is going to clear sooner than ours would. Maybe you bought a Stealth Arms grip safety only and you have another frame from another manufacturer and another trigger and you know that's another scenario so if you buy a stealth arms frame trigger grip safety then then yes we could pre-fit the grip safety but it's just it's it's just a safety uh, safety problem and everybody's different somebody might want theirs to disengage the trigger at 50% of engagement depression, and some might want it to be at, say, 80. Um, this allows you, for, for a simple file job, it allows you to customize your gun the way you want it. Fitting the grip safety is a common question we get. Um, you can see from the two, this is an untouched grip safety here. And you can see the shiny where the anodized has been worn away. Uh, that's the area you're gonna be fitting. And to help explain that, I've got our cutout frame. So it's got a little window here. You can see exactly what's going on. So we'll start to assemble it here go through the process. Another common problem is the spring, the uh, sear spring. This arm right here is what pushes the grip safety out and a lot of times you'll need to bend this back to give it a little more engagement on the grip safety. Give it a little more, a little more pull. The goal, the purpose of the grip safety is to block the trigger from moving rearward until the grip safety is depressed. So you, you want to be able to put down about 70% uh, of travel of the grip safety and then the trigger will clear. That's kind of the, what, what we shoot for. If you, if you make it so it has to be depressed all the way, then you might get into some 
fail to fire issues because you know you're gonna have to death grip this thing for the trigger to clear that's why you want about 70 percent approximately you don't want to file so much away that you just barely touch the grip safety and the trigger can go you know then it doesn't serve as as a safety anymore at that point a little ear here on the grip safety blocks the trigger and once so this this one here it's about it's probably about 50 percent of depression and then it, it lets the trigger go i'll show you a uh, factory the unfitted grip safety so you can see exactly you know where they come in at to start Okay, so from the factory, you can see how much you know. We push it down all the way, and it just, just barely doesn't doesn't clear. I mean, it's it's close. So that gives you an idea how much you need to take away. It's it's not not much. And during the fitting process, take your time. Don't, don't get in a hurry to take away too much material at once because once it's off, it's gone. You can't put it back on. So put your grip safety in, test it. And what I do is you know, push, push back on the trigger and then watch, you know, see where, where does the trigger go? When does it release? right there and you can put a little like a, a permanent marker or some sort of mark nothing that's going to scratch the grip safety but just something to give you some sort of indication on on when the trigger is being released right there <laughs>